What's going on everybody? My name is Monachui, coach of the Tampa Bay Luxuries, and today I'm bringing you guys our GBA Week 10 match versus Lord MV, coach of the San Diego Gym Chargers. Like I said, my team builder, please check him out in the description below if you have not already. He's an absolutely incredible battler, both in the format and in standard play. Uh, I apologize that this is the third week in a row that our match is being played on Showdown. Uh, the match versus Sam, like I said, I was in my hotel room in Ohio, so I wasn't able to play it on Wi-Fi. Uh, the match versus John, John requested it to be on Showdown just to save time, and I was totally fine with that. And then we actually got into the match, it got to our leads, and then the game crashed. And we're not sure whose internet it was on, because I was still online and he said he was still online. So I have no idea what, was that, what that was going on. Maybe there was maintenance, maybe uh, the servers just decided to shit themselves that one time. So we just decided to play it on Showdown just to be safe. But like I said, I'm totally comfortable with I know MV is very comfortable with. Um, but Anyway, with that being out of the way, let us now get into the team he decided to bring. He has his Sneasel, Mega Ampharos, Gyarados, Jirachi, Don Fan, and Togekiss, about the team I expected. Of course, I did have checks for the other things as well, but no Keldeo, which is nice. Um, kind of expected, because like I said, I have Amoongus, I have my checks to that thing. Um, and I have an entire team builder de dedicated to my team, but on our side we have our Modest Mega Manectric, we have our Life Orb Garchomp, we have our Offensive... Um, Bronze Long, we have our Scarf Mandibuzz, we have our Mixed Defensive Amoongus, and we have our Kebia Berry Azumarill. So without further ado, let's get into the game. I am really looking forward to a fun, competitive game, hopefully hacksless, so let's get right into it here. I lead with my Azumarill because it has a very good lead versus the majority of his team. This is also the lead we went with uh, in the Wi-Fi game as soon as it disconnected, so we decided to go with same leads. Uh, we hadn't actually picked our moves yet, it disconnected before we even made our moves, so regardless, this is my play, this is his play. Um, I wanted to lead with the zoom roll because it beat pretty much any lead uh, bar, anything that isn't Gyarados, and even then, Gyarados can't do too too much to me unless it is uh, DD Bounce, which it probably is, knowing Envy, I do have um, a Moongus that it would be able to deal with. Um, even Ampharos would be able to live a hit, but I would be totally fine with getting that much damage off on Ampharos, uh, weakening his team a bit from a Mega Nectric. So uh, here, I know I can take any hit from this thing, even if he has like Specs Thunderbolt or something like that. I can take it. I don't think I don't really expect him to be Specs, but regardless, I'm going to stay in with my Zumro go for a knockoff. Crits me. That kind of sucks. Uh, I paralyzed. That could be a little bit worse. Okay, this is the worst thing to have ever happened in my life. So this is like the worst thing that could have possibly happened in this situation. <laughs> Uh, turn one, already on the back foot. Um, I kind of needed this Azumarill because Ampharos is kind of a problem and I wanted to, and I can knock it out with Play Rough after some chip damage. It's also just really good for his team in general. KO's Sneasel, KO's uh, the Don Fan after some damage. I would have been able to get a ton of damage off onto this Jirachi because uh, I did go for knockoff on this turn and he's Safety Goggles, not Goldberry, so I would have been able to do a ton of damage to this thing. Um, so yeah, that really sucks. That's like a less than 1% chance of happening, but it is what it is. We're starting off on the back foot. Let's see what we can do from here. I'm going to go for Aqua Jet just to get off a bit of damage. There's no point in saving this thing. Everything outspeeds it. Everything revenge kills it. So I'm going to just go for the Aqua Jet like I said. And here, I know he's going to switch out into something like his Ampharos, so I'm going to go right for the U-turn just to gain myself initiative. And oh my god. So Scarf Mandibuzz, the one time I would have kind of been... The one time, like a paralyzed Mandibuzz would have been terrible. Like, it's bad in general, because paralyzation is par paralyzation. But at least with the uh, paralysis on Mandibuzz, I couldn't get toxic by anything, or like burnt by something. Not that he has anything with burn, unless he's like Skull Gyarados, which I don't think he's gonna be. Uh, essentially, I couldn't have been toxic if I was like a bulky Mandibuzz, but being a Scarf Paralyzed Mon is just terrible. It's nearly worthless, so that's really unfortunate. But I am at least able to gain myself some initiative, go out into my Garchomp as he is forced out into his Don Fan. was hoping to catch his Gyarados or Togekiss coming in to be hit with that Life Orb Stone Edge, but as you can see, he just sends in his Don Fan, which appears to be physical defensive with the leftovers. And here, he's going to pull a very good double out into his Togekiss. I wanted to get da damage off on that Don Fan to put it in range of HP Ice for my Manectric, but here... He's going to pull another switch out into his Don Fan as I send out my Bronze Song, which I'm totally fine with, because he's going to go for Rocks, and I'm going to get a lot of damage off with the Grass Knot, which easily puts him in range of HP Ice for my Manectric. So we are setting ourselves up very nicely for our Manectric. 
Uh, here, I could have predicted the switch, but I just go for another safe grass knot as he sends in Jirachi. I don't have a lot to touch this thing bar the Muscle Banded Boosted Gyro Ball. Muscle Band? I completely forget what that's called. That's good. Uh, Macho Brace, that's it. He skill swaps, it's trying to take my Levitate so I can't hit him with Earthquakes, which is a very good play on his part, but I do switch out an Amanda Buzz, able to gain another turn of initiative with the U-turn if he sends out Ampharos again as I get free switch into Garchomp. And here I decide to get up my rocks as he sends out his Donphan. And something I want to point out here, he cannot go for Rapid Spin at this point. I wanted my rocks up to pressure the Gyarados, to pressure the Togekiss. Maybe I should have just gone for the Earthquake so that I could keep my Garchomp a little bit healthier, but I did want rocks up to pressure the Gyarados, pressure the Togekiss, same thing with the Sneasel, get that 12% on Mega Ampharos, so I wanted those rocks up. And he cannot go for Rapid Spin here. Because I am a Life Orb Garchomp, Earthquake will put him in range uh, to die to Rough Skin. And when you die to Rough Skin while going for Rapid Spin, you do not remove the hazard. So that would be essentially a wasted turn. So he's kind of just forced to go for Earthquake here, as I also fire off an Earthquake. The 40% puts him in range of Rough Skin. He goes for the Earthquake as well. And I'm not expecting this thing to have Ice Shards, so I'm not really fearing that. I'm going to go for another Earthquake, and I will be able to get rid of his Rapid Spinner, uh, pressuring the rest of his team, as well as keeping my Garchomp alive and able to kill some things later on. So here, he sends in his Sneasel. I don't have a great switch, and I'm just going to stack my Paralyzed Mandibuzz as he goes for the knockoff. Uh, activates Weak Armor, which is kind of funny, and knocks off my Choice Scarf, so he's probably pretty confused at that. And he actually hard switches out. Uh, he actually took a very long time to make that play to switch out. So once he started to take up that much time, I started to anticipate that he was uh, Choice Scarf. Because, you know, it's a simple play, just go for High School Crash, it 2 kills pretty much everything on my team bar Bronzong. Uh, so definitely, uh, and but the fact that he did just hard switch out confirms that he is definitely uh, Choice Scarf. But yeah, I'm going to go for the U-turn just in case, you know, I do survive the end of that turn, which I do because he had to switch out. And I'm going to send out my Mega Manectric and just go for the T-Bolt, which will be able to knock this thing out, as he reveals the secondary choice scarf on his Togekiss. And I will be able to knock out the Togekiss, but the damage on this Manectric is pretty big for him, because I'm now in range of Sneasel's attack, which is unfortunate, because it will be able to outspeed me. Here, I maybe should have gone for the HP Ice here, just to get off some good damage on this Ampharos, but I kind of wanted this thing to... I wanted to keep this thing around because it pressured his team so well. I knock out the Gyarados easily. Um, I knock out the Jirachi which a bit more, with a bit more damage. If I get some more chip damage on this, I can knock it out with HP Ice, and then Sneasel cannot switch into anything I have, and it's being pressured by rocks. So I wanted to keep this thing around. I have a couple more rock switches in it, so I go for the Volt Switch, and I believe here I send out my Mandibuzz just as a sack. Um, and as you can see here, he goes right for the Dragon Pulse, which is totally fine. Now this is a pretty important point in the match, because I allowed my Garchomp to take so much damage, uh, it's only going to have two more Life Orb hits, or, um, yeah, it's only going to have two more Life Orb hits. So I could make the prediction of him going into Gyarados and click Stone Edge and knock him out. I could predict him to predict that, stay in as I go for the Earthquake to knock him out, or I could make the neutral play and go for Outrage. So I'm going to go for the Life Orb Outrage here. Probably should have clicked Stone Edge so I had one more... Uh, life Orb hitting this thing, and I could have even switched this out into rocks later on. But regardless, this is the play I decided to go with. I will be able to knock out the Gyarados with two Outrages, and I will go down to the Life Orb on this turn. So, uh, this is still not looking terribly. If his Fabio is not the uh, Rest Talk set, you know, the standard Fabio set, with like Volt Switch, Dragon Pulse, Rest and Sleep Talk, then I actually have a very good chance to win this game with the combination of Bronzong and Moongus and Mega Manectric, because Sneasel has to lock himself into either a dark move or a nice move. Uh, Bronzong lives knockoff from this range anyway, so he, so um, that's really good for me. And Moongus actually lives Icicle Crash from this range as well. So as long as I keep my Mega Manectric alive to get chip damage on things, then we are good, as long as he is not the Rest Talk set. So here, I decide Trick Room is actually my best play because I outslow everything in the Trick Room, so I'm going to do that. And here, I don't have the Earthquake. Even if I did have Earthquake here, it wouldn't have been able to knock out Mega Ampharos because it is extremely bulky even though I am Brave Max Attack. So as you're going to see here, he is then going to go for the rest, and at this point, it's over. Um, I cannot beat this thing now. Like I said, my Azumarill and my Garchomp were pretty much the only two things that could have possibly... Uh, offensively check this thing, that and HPS on Mega Manectric if it was worn down enough. But as you're going to see, 
Uh, nothing I can do here really matters. He's just going to be able to stall me out with this. Um, not really stall me out. He's going to be able to beat everything I have 1v1 with Fabio. Uh, because, yeah, that is what Fabio does. Uh, it is very good. The sleep talk definitely, or rest talk definitely makes sense for my team. It's very good sleep fodder for my moon gifts because I score it and then he has sleep talk to still do things to my team. Um, it's bulky as hell. Like, like I said, if it was fully physically defensive, it was not. But if it was, it could live life orb hits from my Garchomp, which is disgusting. It could live a hit from my Azumarill. But, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna let this, the rest of this game play out. I lose 3-0. Uh, and let's just, I guess, talk about the game. Uh, first three turns were... Uh, kind of bullshit, I would say. You know, I don't think there's many people that would disagree with that, but outside of that, uh, MB's prep was excellent. It wasn't anything too crazy like he has brought in previous weeks, but it was everything he essentially needed to bring in order to get a win. Especially after the hacks, he played exactly how he needed to in order to preserve a win, and that's all you really have to do. Once you're put into a favorable position, you don't have to play anything crazy. He played it straight up, and it worked out perfectly because uh, that's, you know, that's what good players do. You see what you have to do to win, and you do it. Simple enough. So, here as you're gonna see, Ampharos is just gonna knock out my last remaining member. Mega Ampharos getting four kills this game, that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. So, just to talk about the rest of the season for a little bit, we are currently 5-5 five and five with, I believe, a minus 5 differential, but, uh, spoiler alert, if you don't want to listen, then turn it off now. I'm about to spoil the, uh, game between John and Lars. Uh, Lars actually lost to John, and Lars was right behind me in the playoff spot, or in the playoff race. He still is, but he was right behind me in the playoff race. If he won this match, he took my playoff spot. I have the fourth playoff spot in our division. Like, I think it goes MV, George, um, Nick, and then me. And then there are a couple people fighting for that spot as well, being John and Lars, and I believe Dan as well, and I think Tom's still in it as well. Uh, but, yeah, so... They are right on my tail. I really need to win my next two games in a row in order to keep my playoff spot. I can't bank on both of those guys losing out. I have to win my next two games, and it's not going to be easy because we're going up against Tom, who's on a little bit of a streak. He was able to defeat George a couple weeks ago, and then we have to play George himself, who we previously lost to. So it's going to be, it's definitely going to be a very tough road ahead, but I definitely think we can do it. Um, if we win our next two games in a row, then I'm pretty sure we are guaranteed for playoffs. So hopefully I'm right about that, and hopefully we are able to obtain those victories. So thank you guys very much for watching, uh, and I'll see you in the next one.